The Lagos State House of Assembly has threatened to arrest the former governor of the state, Mr. Kimwumi Ambade. And the Academic Staff Union of Polytechnics, ASUP, has threatened to withdraw their services after 21 days if the problems of the polytechnic education in Nigeria are not resolved. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. The former governor of Lagos State, Akin Wumi Ambade, has been threatened with a warrant of arrest by the Lagos State House of Assembly. This decision followed two preliminary reports presented by two article committees set up by the House to investigate 820 buses purchased by Mr. Ambade to appraise the 2019 media budget. It was stated that Ambody did not report to the House before commencing on the purchase of the buses. Joining me to discuss this are Olale Koadigu, a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much for coming on. Good evening. Good evening. And of course, we have Tammy Kalio, a political commentator. Pleasure to have you join us. Pleasure to be here. Another drama in our hands, a warrant of arrest for the governor that just stepped aside. What is your thought? Well, <laughs> Nigerian politics and drama uh, seem to go uh, hand in hand. It's not a new phenomenon. Uh, we've had that in Imo too, uh, Imo states. Uh, well, in fact, in, even in that situation, it was the case of a governor ordering the people to actually arrest the former governor. So the, what the Lagos State House of Assembly is doing is particularly not new because that's one of the reasons why uh, incumbents will just sit tight on their, uh, on, their, on their positions instead of just, just trying to give in just easily. That explains why people don't, don't just want to give up power just easily. Again, if you look at the uh, issue of legal status of assembly on the, uh, the, order, or the order of arrests on the issue of the bosses, it's not peculiarly due to institutional uh, issues. It's, due to, it's purely political. Now, the, Lake, the House of Assembly uh, made an allegation that he, uh, what is it called? Uh, the, he purchased the, um, the, 820 buses. Without recourse to the State House of Assembly. He was there for four years. The State House of Assembly was there for four years. There was nothing that, that happened all through the drama that played out during the APC uh, uh, primaries, all through the, uh, all through his, uh, uh, his, the drama that, brought, that played out, that Everything just went the way it went, and the House of Assembly did nothing about it. And they are now coming out now to, you know, make a warrant of arrest. It shows that we still have a lot to do in terms of our uh, institutional, uh, the way we play our institutional politics. Is it political, in your opinion? Well, <clears throat> I don't think anything that happens um, with regards to politics and with regards to former governors and different parties and all that can be stripped of politics. politics, exactly. So we're talking about politicians here, we're talking about lawmakers, and what makes them who they are is the fact that they are politicians. Even when you check their bio, you see that they are politicians. So if you look at it, you'll see that, okay, yes, this may be political, but we, are we also should not disregard the part where what is going on right now is what true democracy looks like. So you have a system of government where you have the executive arm, legislative, and the judiciary where you have the, the legislative arm checking the executive powers. So I think particularly it's interesting that they're trying to discover and see, okay, if this governor abused privileges, if he didn't follow due process in doing even something that is beneficial for the state. So I think it's, it's a little bit of both, actually. It's political, and they could just be doing their jobs as well. Yeah, they could be doing their job, because if you look at the amount that is being peddled, they had... 820 cards, the amount being, uh, it's about 22 billion was paid as import duties. Mm -hmm. And a total of how much for the buses? Um, we have over 48 billion, 48 billion was used. So in total, we have, we're talking about close to a, at least 80 yes, about or 80 billion. 90 billionaire. That's a lot of money. Yes. Does it worry you that such an amount could be used without the proper processes being followed? You can't ordinarily allocate that kind of uh, an amount of money in a place like Lagos without ordinarily resorting to uh, approval from the, Lagos, from the House of Assembly. It's ordinarily should be an impeachable offense, if you ask me. But we are still growing, as is rightly said. 
uh, that we, they may just be doing their job, but maybe they are doing it uh, on a very later note. But what I think, and why I said it's political, is that it did not happen at that time. It, 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 he allocated the money, purchased the bursaries without recourse to the State House of Assembly. And I think the State House of Assembly should have just done their job at the time. Maybe, uh, what's it called, uh, raising an uh, impeachment motion against him, to co or maybe to make him come and explain why you can, what is the urgency of the need for those buses. Because I know it's possible for a governor or a president or an executive, in the case of executive or uh, legislative relation, uh, relation, to actually spend an amount of money for, due to either emergency of the situation exactly. or maybe there's urgent need for it. For example, in the case of emergency, for example, during the, uh, if you look at section 305 of the constitution, talks about uh, declaration of state of emergency. Declaration of state of emergency is not a, just about violence. It can be something about uh, a catastrophe, uh, a, a landmine or No, but some, is, it, is this the case? It's, it's, that's what I'm driving at. It's not like anything like that happened. There was just no communication with the House of Assembly and that ordinarily, it's an impeachable offense, if you ask me. So why do you think the former governor has not responded to at least two calls by the Senate ad hoc committee, I mean, the House the ad hoc committee to so. review the matter, if he has nothing to hide? If, if for instance, is uh, an emergency situation that warranted that action, there must be an explanation. So what do you think is stopping him from honoring the call of the House? Well, it appears that uh, my friend um, discussed with me before we came in here. Well, it looks like he feels he's probably being witch hunt, witch hunted. Sorry. So, but I don't know. I don't know what exactly is the reason he has. But hasn't even if you're being witch hunted mm -hmm. in this in, in this scenario, even if you're being witch hunted, your name is being solid with yes. these comments, and they're, they're saying that. Uh, I mean, they've given him the benefit of doubt. They're going to go to uh, the newspapers and put and out publish, uh, publish uh, mm -hmm. the advertorial for him to come. And where that fails, they're going to issue a warrant, of, warrant arrest. of arrest. Should he allow it to get to this point? No, he should not. Ordinarily, I think by law, the moment you're invited by the legislative arm, by the House of Assembly, to come and explain something, you're obliged to attend, at least show up. If there's any reason why you should not show up for such invitation, you should issue at least something reasonable. You should give a reason why you will not be able to attend. Either he's attending a function or he's out of the country or one of those things. But I think that ignoring it completely is the problem right there. He, you seem to want to add something yes. to that thought. And uh, uh, Governor Mbode, well, with due respect to him, uh, he has been on, in the news for a while. His house in uh, Ekwe was uh, 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 allegedly, uh, uh, you know, uh, operative of the EFCC, allegedly uh, boggled his yeah. house at some point. We actually point. had that conversation we, now, here. Now, in, again, now, we should not make it look like, or our viewers should not, uh, may, uh, should not be made to believe that is the this is the first time a former governor will be summoned by the State House of Assembly. Uh, uh, B.C. Akonde, uh, governor for Shoe State, uh, 1999 to 2003, after his tenure, he was actually summoned by the Shoe State House of Assembly to come and make a concrete explanations about some of the projects he actually uh, did. And even though those projects were actually approved by the Osho State House of Assembly, he still was summoned. The State House of Assembly is empowered by law to actually make such common yes. summons on any public office or officer. So somebody disregarding uh, that kind of call uh, is worrisome. And that shows the kind of uh, uh, attitude he had as governor of the state, you know, disregard, uh, disregard for the uh, for uh, for uh, legislative process. It's a, it's a very very serious and uh, uh, issue that we are even talking about in Nigeria. And Lagos, as we were saying before we came in, Lagos is still a little better in terms of <laughs> institutional. Uh, if some some governors don't even bother going to some governors may not even they just throw the uh, uh, budget document to the state house of assembly and you just, in fact we have even seen governors coming to the status of assembly and passing the uh, budget right away. We have seen that happen. Governors are emperors, so to say. They rule like emperors. They look. They rule like sole administrators. But this is a democracy. That should not be. That the should not be. The case. But this is. This was. This has been happening under a democracy. We saw a lot. In fact, we were talking about uh, some governors, some state, and that has to be. These are some of the things we have to develop. We can't just be talking about 20, uh, 20 years of continuous democracy. We should also be talking about developing institutions. 
And that we talk, and when I talk about institutions, we are talking about political parties. We need to talk about internal democracy, even within the political party, democracy even within the legislature, democracy even in the attitude of the executive to the legislature. We are talking about democracy in terms of executive obeying the court orders. Okay. Do you so the, the, let's, let's flip this conversation okay. on its mm -hmm. head and look at the fact that it seems once an administration leaves office and another comes in, there automatically is an investigation of the previous administration and this seems to take a whole chunk of time. Yes. The, the question I want to ask is, isn't it possible that this is distracting the new administration from focusing on serving the people? This is what they said they wanted to come and do. They spent so much time looking at what is not saying do not investigate, but yes. it seems so much effort is expended. Is there something you have to say about that? Well, I don't think that they're wasting a lot of time. I think that most governments can actually pursue more than one thing at a time. So there's, it's more like um, when you start a new financial year, you have to do an audit of the previous one. So you have an administration that comes in and you need to clean the books, make sure that everything was run perfectly. If things didn't work out fine, you need to look at those loopholes and plug them in so you don't make those same mistakes with the new government that you have. So what it looks like right now is a new administration that has come into power and they've seen that, okay, yes, this amount of money was expended on specific infrastructure or in a certain sector. Meanwhile, there were other sectors that probably were lacking. So they want to know why that money was spent without proper like channels pass through the National Assembly without seeking approval from the, sorry, the State House of Assembly without seeking approval from that. So I don't really think that they should, um, that, the, that they're wasting their time. Because after all, if you look around, you see that they're still continuing with projects that were owned by the previous administration. But at the same time, you still have to do those things to make sure that you don't make those mistakes. You don't have a new governor who's going to come in and then do one or two things without passing through the State House of Assembly to ensure that he gets the, the right permissions, that he gets approvals for spending of that amount of money. Now, I read about the whole thing and I saw that it was money that was, the, it was alleged that it was money from the Paris Club Agreement. Yes, the Paris, yes, Paris debt that was paid back to Lagos State. Mm -hmm. You don't take that amount of money and spend it on one thing. And then not only that, the buses weren't fully delivered. You only they have just about- They're still at the seaport. Yes, they're still at the seaport. You delivered about 350 of them and then you still have a lot of them at the seaports. And this amount of money has already been spent. It has already been signed, but it didn't pass through the Lagos State House of Assembly. So that's the problem right there. The fact that he didn't pass through proper channels is a problem. And right now, the, re the reason it looks this way is because he was invited and he didn't show up. That's another problem. It's, it's like a flagrant disregard of the rule of law. If you don't have um, people at the helm of affairs obeying basic rule of law, you don't expect the people who you are called to serve, or the people who elect you to the seat to obey the rule of law. So that's my own decision. I think that they can actually do these two things and more at the same time. Do you share that with me? Yes, uh, I will take up a, a little. Uh, I'll, I'll pick up a little further from where, it, because we are talking about accountability, and one of the uh, reasons for you to talk about institutions is to build accountability. That's why you have all these institutions in the first instance. Otherwise, we can as well do away with them. Now, we can't talk about government without talking about the three, it's three arms. It's like saying the body, the head or the arm should just, uh, or the heart should just leave the body. No, it doesn't work like that because government is a system in which you talk about input processing and output. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Now, when you talk about this thing, accountability comes through, and that is one of the hallmark of democracy in the first instance, accountability. You, yeah. We must know how we are spending what. We want to know how you are, uh, how you, how you, uh, what, what is coming in. We want to know what is going out. Huh? Now, in this case, it's I don't have a problem if the former governor really didn't, uh, um, you know, uh, recourse to the state house of assembly. Maybe he may have his reasons. I think uh, it's also happened in the case of uh, President Buhari before the presentation of the 2017 budget. In the, uh, uh, on the issue of importation of arms. Mm -hmm. And this thing was, was actually in the uh, uh, bill, um, the, the appropriation the bill, bill. Yeah. that was sent to the National Assembly. But at the time, the same amount that was in the appropriation bill, he had to uh, uh, purchase uh, arms from the US at the time with exactly the same amount. I think there was a question about raising impeachment notice for the president at the time as to why would you spend money without appropriate, and he, the thing it was, it was actually explained that okay, this was what I did with the money, and that is how things should 
should do, should, should, be, uh, should go. Not like you just say, oh, you just keep mom. Oh, I spent it, and so what? But what it's could be Amber's excuse, in, in your opinion? My opinion is just... For not appearing. It just shows a kind of personality that we elect into public office, particularly executive offices, where I, 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 I regarded uh, governors as emperors. You know, that's the behavior of, you know, they, they are like the state. And it, I was, uh, was chatting with somebody the other day. I saw a governor who said they, they were just at a function, not like it was, he, he just came, he just made an announcement. We are going to donate uh, something, bi something billion, <laughs> an announcement in a public function. That kind of money, the question you ask yourself is, was it in the state budget? The question you ask yourself is, on, under what, in what capacity is he donating that money? Do you understand? These things happened during the military era, where governors just come to functions. There was really, there were really no elected assemblies. They just behave anyhow they like. And that is exactly the way some of these are governors are behaving today. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And that shows the, uh, the attitude that Ambode might have even exemplified in the way he even carried out uh, his administration. Otherwise, you, you seem to refer to that a lot, uh, his uh, antecedents of uh, behaving in yeah, similar person. fashion. But let me, let me ask you this question, uh, Tammy. But if it is a, a mixture of both, political witch hunting, uh, mm -hmm. as you say, where would it end? Would it go beyond Warrant of arrest? Would he be imprisoned? Do you see anything mm. coming out of this political winch hunt? Well, if we look at the history of what has always gone down for the country and former governors, former heads of states, former political appointees. We rarely see we, them go yeah, behind bars. We don't so. see them go behind bars. So, well, I wouldn't say I'm quite hopeful for that, but at least it will serve as a deterrent to the next administration. So you know that there's an accountable process here. It and had, apart from we've all always that, had this, and it doesn't seem to have achieved much. Do you, I mean, back to the same question I asked you earlier. Isn't it a distraction for the new administration? Yes, deal with what you need to deal with on the side, but focus on delivering service that you have promised to the people. Let that have prominence in your agenda. Well, I... Well, we have had uh, instances of governors, uh, Jolly Nyame, uh, gov former governor of uh, Taraba, and uh, the, other, uh, the other one from, from former governor of Plateau, they are both in prison now, you know, for uh, oh, what... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for what... Just a uh, few. Not, just a few. <laughs> <laughs> for, for us, we even be able to remember them and yes. say about 72 governors have... Uh, over 72 governors have served uh, oh, just, and right. just, to, just to... Even though the EFCC under Ribadu in 2007 or so made uh, the statement that to the effect that 25 governors were actually under EFCC's watch, you understand, and only two of them are, are in jail today, you know, and you also talk about the question of plea bargaining. I think Oji Uzo Kalutu has, uh, has the issue, he has, been, he has been in and out of EFCC uh, uh, headquarters for a while. Back to what you were saying, the question of delivering service to the people, in the process of you, the, the democracy, in the military era, we had service delivered. The Third Milan Bridge was a product of military, was, was built during the military era. Many of these universities that you see today were okay. built during the military era. Most of them never went through uh, the thorough accounting processes or uh, institutional accounting processes. Then the question you ask yourself is, if it's about, oh, I, I just want to deliver, I don't, you don't, bother, don't bother to ask me how much was spent. For example, you constructed a, a, a 10 kilometer road for, uh, for, for let's say 50 billion, nobody should bother to ask, I've done it. Do you understand? Even though the next rainy season will reveal the kind of materials that we use, as we have seen, as, as, as I was coming here today, I was like, come, who do, this is rainy season, and these are roads that billions upon billions have been allocated to. Over the years, there is no year since since I started becoming uh, politically conscious, that money for roads have not been in any budget. And I stand to be corrected on this. But you now find a situation where, you know, where are the roads? The, road, the next raining season is just, is, is, is just here. Before you, that's, that, that, would just, that would just give you the revelation of the true state of the road. Are these really roads? So we, as citizens, must begin to ask serious questions. You can't just tell us you built so so number of roads. So somebody, I think it was during the Adesha Yogulewe when he was he talked about operation 500 roads, operation 10,000 roads, operation these roads. So this accountability process is something we must insist on as citizens. It's not enough to say, oh, we are we have done this, we have done. These are cosmetic. These are, it's like you can fix plugs. 
I was in, I, I was in a class in a, in a university here in Lagos. All the plugs in the class, millions of naira have been uh, allocated to, you know, electrifying the, all the all the plugs there. I couldn't even find a place to charge my phone. I was like, this, all these plugs are just here for cosmetic purposes, and these things are things they send as projects that have been executed. Do you yeah, know, accountability, accountability is still an issue. Is still still but let, let, let's let me ask: Do you envisage a period in our ta in our history, in our democracy? when we will have a proper handover from one government to another without this unnecessary um, you know, backlash of investigating corruption allegation, litigation. Do you envisage a time when one administration will come in and say, yes, there were lapses here, but they've done their bid, they've handed over properly and all of that. Is that yes, possible? Yes, it is possible. Because when you look at um, like the grand scale of things, you see that yeah, in as much as we may not have had a very smooth transition of powers, it has progressed little by little from time till this point. It has moved from one person to the other. They'll talk about the previous administration, but sometimes they don't tend to dwell to a lot, like a lot of the time on it. So yes, I, I'm a very hopeful person. So for our country, I actually look at a time when we will have a situation where we have a government who does their job so well that when the next administration comes in, not because they were kicked out, but because maybe they finished their tenure, when the next administration comes in, they are instead saluting and building on the work of the previous administration. So I look at that particular time as coming for our government. If you look at um, the time In your from, time or in, in my time, time? Not my children's time. Well, technically my children's time, I'll still be alive. <laughs> so, but in my time, I look at that you because it's, that. it's something I'm quite hopeful about. But if other countries like um, Singapore, China could do that, if um, states like the United Arab Emirates could do that, then I don't see why Nigeria shouldn't. I really don't. We have the resources. All we require is the political will. We require the reorientation of the minds of every single person so that we understand that, yes, governance is not about coming in to just make a lot of money. You're coming to serve people. You're not coming to enrich your lives and your family and everyone who even says hello to you. So it's all about like having a country that is transparent a country that has transparent leaders, accountable leaders, like he has always mentioned, because accountability is not a joke. I've, I've, been, I've been hitting on that accountability, accountability as he's been talking, which, yes. Yeah. So you, you see, you can't move forward without talking about that. You have to make sure, it, it's part of your service delivery to the people as a government. If you come in and say, I'm going to deliver this service to the people, part of it is you make sure that you are accountable. And by being accountable, you make sure that everything that has been spent from people's oh, hard earned money. Your books are in order. Yes, they are in order. So that's Your final that's thoughts on this. Do you see a conclusion to this entire matter before the house? The cars still, uh, what happens to those cars in the long run? Do you see us retrieving it and being, it being used for the state? I'll be really happy for former Governor Ambody if they can, uh, if he can uh, resolve this uh, imbroglio in time and make, maybe uh, find a way to uh, get these bosses, because that is the only proof he seems to have now. The, once and the this, monies were actually spent. That the monies were bosses. actually spent, because that is the only way he can come before the State House of Assembly and justify himself. Otherwise, the question will still hang on his neck. And this thing is not about now. It will be it, it and my fear is that things like this may get replicated in many of these places. Because Lagos is actually one of the standards of institutional governance, yeah. you know, in Nigeria. But I if agree. these kind of things are happening in Lagos, what now becomes of governors, a state where the governors have become uh, prebender lords, where they allocate, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the judiciates, they execute at the same time? Let's be hopeful that yes. there will be a conclusion that will be favorable to Lagos State. Yes, thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your thoughts on the program. You. Thank, thank you. you. Pleasure as well. Right, and thank you for staying with us. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be speaking on the plight of polytechnics um, off the plea, polytechnics and its plans to embark on strike. Do stay with us.